Welcome back to Fashion Here. So today uh, I'm going to be looking at Mercedes uh, during my series uh, looking at uh, each team at the roughly the halfway mark of the 2023 F1 season. So of course there are two drivers, uh, Lewis Hamilton been at the team for a decade now uh, and George Russell in his second season with Mercedes. Now looking at the drivers head to head, first looking at points, 148 points for Hamilton 99 for Russell, so a pretty good advantage there for Hamilton. And looking at just the points from the non-sprint races, it's 144 to 92. Race head-to-head, -head, uh, I think really kind of bears this out. Uh, 7 to 3 in favor of Hamilton in the race head-to-head. -head. But average finishing position is pretty close. Uh, 5.07 for Hamilton and 5.77 for Russell. So less than uh, one position between them there. In qualifying, it's, it's a little bit closer than in the race, but recently it's definitely been in Hamilton's favor. Uh, seven to five is the quality head to head uh, with an average qualifying delta of 0 0.158, so about a tenth and a half of a second. The interesting thing to note with qualifying head to head, uh, Ham uh, Russell at one point, I believe, led it 4 0 and 5 1. So the fact that Hamilton's come back and out qualified uh, Russell so often the last. Uh, probably the second quarter of the season or so, uh, really shows that he's really uh, got, gotten a lot more comfortable with the car uh, compared to at the start of the year. Looking at the, their averages on my power rankings, uh, 4.38 for Hamilton and 7.08 for Russell. Uh, so I do think Hamilton's probably been one of the three or four best drivers uh, this, year's, this year. Uh, Russell's been good, but that being said, he has had a couple mistakes. Uh, in a couple of qualifying sessions, uh, especially recently, where I do feel like he's underperformed a little. Expected points, so for my front running model for expected points, 136.4 for Hamilton and 116.2 for Russell. So generally showing that at the start of the races, Hamilton is starting at a little bit better position and Hamilton ha does indeed have a higher number than his expected points, showing that he's been doing a really fantastic job in that car. Uh, Russell's a little bit behind. Uh, she did have a little bit of bad luck uh, with that engine blow up in Australia. Would have been a massive pull point for him there. That being said, I do think that he's had a couple mistakes this year. In terms of disparity between the drivers in the races, uh, the set score delta is 1.31, uh, which ranks fifth, so right about average uh, on the grid. Now, looking at the qualifying gap and how they've kind of uh, trend, kind of uh, progressed through this year. For the first five races, so of course, barring to Miami, uh, the average gap to pole was 0 0.679 seconds, which ranked fourth. Uh, races 6 through 12, uh, that's dropped to 0 0.334, uh, which ranks third. So they passed Aston Martin uh, in terms of gap to pole, uh, especially in qualifying performance, and even got uh, a pole position, Lewis Hamilton getting pole position at the Hungarian Grand Prix. Um, so it does seem like a little bit of progress this year, although funnily enough, uh, Russell got a pole position there last year as well, so it seems like they just work very well at that track. Now looking at Mercedes uh, and their recent history, 2020, 573 points, first in the Ch Constructors' Championship, absolutely dominating season. Of course, the points all does seem a little low, but of course, there was only 17 races that year, so if, uh, if it had been the full 2022 uh, race season, uh, that number would probably be a lot higher. Uh, 2021, of course, that epic title fight with Red Bull, 613.5 uh, points, which of course won the Constructors' Championship. Uh, Bottas was quite a bit better than Perez that year, uh, which helped to really win them the championship that year. 2022, the first year of the ground effect regulations and a really big drop off for the team uh, relative to their expectations after having won basically what was it, eight Constructors' Championships in a row. 515 points, which dropped them down to third. And now this year, uh, it's been, I would say, a little bit better on the whole. Uh, 247 points, which I guess uh, on average, their points total, if you basically uh, prorated out for the rest of the year, that would be slightly lower, I believe, uh, than their points total from last year. But this year, they're uh, in second in the constructors and do look a pretty comfortable second. Um, I don't really think any of the teams, the three teams behind them, McLaren, Ferrari, or Aston Martin, uh, are really going to catch them for different reasons. Um, but And I do think they have a pretty good shot at getting a second place. So, of course, for this year, 
Uh, the goal for the rest of the year is going to be uh, learning as much about the car as I can and trying to push for uh, maybe getting a win for both Russell and for Hamilton. Obviously championships uh, out of reach at this point. Um, I mean, it was out of reach, you could probably say round five, race five, race six. But for them, uh, it'll be really about building for next year and trying to mount a championship challenge in 2024. Uh, so that's all for my video looking at Mercedes. Of course, we only have one more, uh, and that is Red Bull, and I'll be out in a couple of days' time. Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.